Hi, this is Eric of Iron Software and welcome back to our courseware. You might have seen this shot before and what I want to do at the uh, end of this courseware tutorial is to add a foreground element like this to the shot. Let's start right away and uh, of course you could use an FBX mesh which you import in Diffusion like this one which I found on the web but uh, for royalty reasons this can't be included so why not use the tools that come with Fusion to model well at least that inner part of the window let's start with a shape 3D and let's make it into a uh, cylinder should have a rather small radius maybe something like 0.15 actually 0.015 like that and then we add a duplicate 3D and give it an X offset of say 0.5 and make four copies well actually let's make five copies then we add a transform 3D and give that a Z rotation of 90 degrees. And now I want to combine the output of the duplicate 3D and the transform 3D. So obviously a merge 3D would be the tool of choice. And then back to my transform 3D I line those two elements up. Actually you now see one of the beauties of Fusion's uh, relative coordinates. So in this case an offset of 1 and minus 1 perfectly aligns the two elements. The next thing a window needs is a window pane so let's again go with the shape 3D connect it to the same merge bring the size up again in this case to make sense and align it to the center of the window. Again, an offset of 1 perfectly lines it up. Let's go to the materials tab for a moment and bring the opacity down like that. And the last thing we need to add to our window are those little uh, thingies here in the middle. So let's again go with the shape Connect it to the merge and in this case it should be a cube, rather huge, maybe like that, or maybe a little bit smaller. No 0.06 and again add a duplicate 3D given an X offset of 0.5 and a number of copies. Actually let's make this only three copies because I want to have this only in the middle of my uh, window here. So back to my shape move it over again numerically 0.5 and move it up as well again numerically 0.5 copy and paste my duplicate 3D and instead of an X offset we apply a Y offset and you might have guessed already minus 0.5 suits just fine in this case back to my shape let's add a Z rotation of 45 degrees so we get something like this apparently we need to add some sort of reflection to our window pane and this is where Fusion's material system comes into play. Let me rearrange my tools a little bit and actually rename this guy here to window just by hitting F2 and typing in the new tools name and what I have here no wait what I have here is a let long image of a reflective sphere. So what we could now add is a simple reflect tool. Connect that to our window pane and connect the garden reflect 
to the reflection color material. Right now you don't see that much and that is because my reflect tool is set to the reflection variability by angle. So the face on strength is zero. Let's bring that up a bit. And the glancing strength as well. And you see this doesn't really look like a reflection for now. And that is because that lat long image I have here has to be converted into a spherical map first. Having my tool selected, I type sphere map which now makes this into a spherical map and now you see that my reflection on the window looks much better. However, a reflect shader does not come with a lighting model so we also need something to make this react to light. To do that, in this case I want to use a Cook Torrance shader. Pipe that into the background input of the reflect material. And now you see we also have a little bit of interaction with the light going on here. Let's see this in conjunction with my window frame and obviously I also need a material for the window frame as well. In this case instead of going into the individual materials here I just add a blind shader for now. Pipe that into both my shapes which define the window frame and let's say this should be rather dark something like that and uh, maybe the specular exponent should be way down and so should be the specular intensity so that should be enough for the moment well you see that the reflections actually still look a little bit dull and uh, here comes a nice trick on how to correct that. My original reflection image is a JPEG which is by default 8-bit integer. But let's add a brightness contrast here and to the brightness contrast add a ranges mask and take the output of the reflection map as the input for the ranges. And in the ranges mask I say I only want to use the highlights as a mask on my brightness contrast and in the brightness contrast I ramp up my gain. If I now switch on the uh, sub view and actually set it to color inspector you see that the values in my highlights are pretty much clipped to one. Again this is because the original image is set to 8-bit because it's a JPEG. However in the import tab of a loader I can set the depth the tool is processed in to for example float 32 and you see how this instantly changes the look of my brightness contrast and you also see that I now have values far beyond one actually in the range of four point something almost five for red green and blue. If I apply this as a reflection to my window and also set by right clicking the texture depth in my view to float 32 as well. You see that I instantly get much nicer, much brighter reflections here which do look a bit more like the real thing. The next thing that is typical for such old windows is that they have a little bit of dirt that also interacts with the map. For that I have this JPEG here, a nice dirt map, and if we look at our window we actually have four by four small window panes and what I want to do just to save time is to take my dirt map add a transform tool and scale it down actually I want to scale it down by one quarter so in the size field I just type one divided by four well that's 0 0.25 we could have done that in our head. The other thing you want to activate in the transform tool in this case is the wrap option which means that everything that goes outside of the screen is brought back in on the other side. And you will also notice that the uh, tiles do not actually line up with the boundaries of your image. To correct for that you can either move the center of your transform around manually or again 
go into your center and type an offset like 0.125 and 0.125 which again based on the relative coordinates in fusion is uh, well half of the value of the actual size to bring that down directly in the center and end up with a 4x4 pattern. We connect this as the background material to our Cook Torrance shader so you already see a little bit of dirt here on the window actually we need to bring the opacity down here on our Cook Torrance because it's a window and at the end of the day we want to see through it. Then we also add a bump map tool and again we connect the output of the transform with our dirt map to the bump map and connect the output of the bump map to the bump map texture input of our reflect node. So this looks more like a sheet of metal which we don't want. So let's bring down the height scale here. A quick look to our Cook Torrance shader and I think we still need to do something about the lighting here. So what I do is I bring down the roughness of my light and I bring up the refractive Fresnel index maybe even something like that and the Cook Torrance shader also offers an input for the specular intensity. However, intensity is driven by an alpha channel. So what I do is I add a luma key. Again, take the output of the transform with my dirt map and the luma key basically converts the luma values into an alpha channel and I connect that to the specular intensity material on my Cook Torrance shader. So what you see now is that depending on my map I do get very nice light interactions here. And maybe back in my Luma key I just, you know, crush the blacks and the whites a little bit. So you see very nice interaction going on here. Back to my window that looks like this. Actually I still think I can bring down the height scale of the bump map a little bit and maybe use the same bump map also on the bump map material on my Cook Torrance shader. So I also get interaction with the light. Speaking of light, one last setup I want to do for this part of the tutorial is to add actual light to the window. I do that in this case not by adding a point light or a spotlight but a projector, projector 3D in this case and as a source for the projector again I use my reflect map here so let's clean this up a little bit, make some space pipe that into the projector view it here move it around and actually I want to use a target on my projector so go to the 3D widgets use target which now sits on my window here and then I move my projector around until I somehow match what I think the original light position could be and of course in my projector I want to use it to project light not ambient light and not a texture but just light so maybe move it up in Y a little bit or bring it over to the other side and now you see I've got very nice interaction of the light here on my window and on the window panes as well a little bit of uh, refraction going on there and in the next part of this tutorial I will show you how to integrate this with the original scene thanks for your time stay tuned